Hello everyone, today we will be learning about the lymphatic drainage of the uterus. First of all, I will be drawing the abdominal iota which branches into the common iliac artery which then gives the internal iliac and the ex external iliac artery. Here I am drawing the pre-aortic lymph nodes, here I am drawing the para-aortic lymph nodes. Pre-aortic lymph nodes are in front of the iota and the lateral aortic or para-aortic lymph nodes are on either sides of the iota. Here we have the internal iliac and the external iliac lymph nodes. I am just marking the internal iliac lymph nodes here and these are the external iliac lymph nodes. Drawing the same thing on the other side. Then here we have the obturator lymph nodes. And then I'm drawing the uterus here with the fallopian tube and the ovaries. Drawing the same thing on the other side and then I'm drawing the body of the uterus and the cervix of the uterus. Here I am drawing the vagina and here is the region of the hymen. Here I am demarcating the isthmus of the fallopian tube and then the upper and lower part of the body of the uterus and the cervix. Now I am going to demark the vagina into upper and lower halves. Here we have the paracervical lymph nodes. Here we have the sacral lymph nodes and down here we have the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. So now the lymph from the fundus and the upper part of the body and the fallopian tube and the ovaries go to paraiotic and preiotic lymph nodes and the lymph from the isthmus part of the fallopian tube goes to superficial inguinal and lymph from the lower part of the body goes to external iliac and lymph from the cervix goes to sacral lymph nodes, external iliac lymph nodes and through paracervical it drains into obturator lymph nodes. From the upper part of the vagina it drains into external iliac lymph nodes and from the lower part of the vagina it drains into internal iliac lymph nodes. Then part below the hymen drains into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Now let's see the arterial supply of the uterus. So now I'm again drawing the uterus and the fallopian tubes and the ovaries on either sides. I'm drawing the body and the cervix of the uterus. This is a cavity inside the body of the uterus. Then here we have the vagina. I'm just drawing the broad ligament here and shading it. And I'm just marking the broad ligament now. Now here lower border is related to the uterine artery which is tortuous and gives branches to both the uterus and the fallopian tube and the ovaries. So here we have the uterine artery and then here we have the ovarian artery which is a branch of that. Now I am just going to draw the transverse section of the body of the uterus so that we can see the branches of the uterine artery. First I am going to draw all the layers of the body of the uterus that is the perimetrium, myometrium 
and then the inner endometrium inner endometrium can be seen here So here we have the uterine artery which gives the anterior and posterior branches. The same thing happens on the other side and the anastomos. So I'm just marking the uterine artery here. Then these branches are called as the coronary branches. Then these coronary branches, they give several branches here along the radius of the body of the uterus. Hence these branches are known as radial branches which actually form the stratum vascular here in the myometrium. So these are the radial branches. and this is the stratum vascular from these arise a few branches called as the basal branches which then give the spiral arteries basal branches here and these spiral arteries are present in the functional layer of endometrium. Now we'll learn about the venous drainage of the uterus. So it is drained by these uterine veins and the ovarian veins which finally drain into the internal iliac vein now these uterine veins they will form the portocaval anastomosis with the vein which is called as superior rectal vein Now the nerve supply of the uterus, so it is by this uterovaginal plexus, I am drawing the uterus and the fallopian tubes and the ovaries and the body and the cervix and I am doing the same thing on the other side. Here we have the cavity of the uterus. So now we have this sympathetic nerve supply coming from the T12 and L1 to the uterus whereas the parasympathetic supply comes from S2, S3 and S4. The parasympathetic is also known as pelvic splanchnic nerves. Now the pain sensation from the cervix goes to these. Whereas the pain sensation from the body of the uterus goes via the sympathetic lumbar splanchnic nerves.